Okay, everyone, we are going to get started now. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining um, on this very sunny, nice, beautiful weather um, on a Wednesday uh, in Seattle, at least. I'm not sure where you're joining from, but uh, my name is Ruthie Senanayaka, and I work here at Blueprint on the marketing team and um, help run these webinars. And so we really appreciate you all hopping on. Um, we always love to hear your feedback. So if you really enjoyed it and want to um, see more of these or you want to see something a little more different, We'd love to hear your opinion. Um, you can always email, email us at info at bpcs.com and I will get back to you that way. Um, we will kick things off really quick with kind of a quick description about what Blueprint does. But we are a uh, technology solutions company that does everything from, um, you know, prepping all of the data and um, just uh, taking it from the start to the end. Um, and we partner with Databricks. Databricks, uh, as you know, is a very well-known company, and um, we're, we're excited because, you know, we were named Velocity Partner of the Year, uh, and um, it's a big deal, so we're, we're very excited to be partnered with them, and today we have an awesome guest speaker. Um, his name is Shannon, and Shannon will be walking us through um, some of the modern data engineering on Databricks. Uh, quick things to keep in mind. Um, if you have any questions, we are here to answer them for you. There's a Q&A section. So if you just go to the bottom of your screen and click on Q&A, you can enter your question that way. Um, you can also add it to the chat if you like, uh, but the Q&A section does have the option for you to submit it anonymously if you don't want your name on there. We will be taking questions throughout the session um, and at the end as well. So whatever uh, you feel like you want to ask, we encourage it. Um, we are going to kick things off with, you know, having Shannon introduce himself. And um, yeah, so let's kick it off. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. So, hi, my name is Shannon Lauder. I am a 20 plus year uh, Microsoft data professional. Uh, been, a, been in the Databricks workspace now for about three years. Um, so, yeah, let's just jump right in. Share. Oh, um, can I, there we go. All right, looks like my screen sharing. So today I'd like to talk to you about Delta Live tables and how we can start using those to move data in and through our modern data state using Databricks. So just a few points first, uh, Delta Live tables, they're really just Databricks approach to building data pipelines. So it's it's their take on Azure Data Factory or old school SSIS or um, what other systems you may have used in the past. By default, they support both batch or streaming modes, and you'll get to see how we can select that as we define our first Delta Live table. Um, you can develop them in Python or in the Databricks variant of SQL. Um, you can set up multiple processing steps that do support dependencies between steps, which is nice. Uh, you can also define data quality tests uh, using uh, Python or SQL Server. Uh, you can also redirect rows. So if you want to set up a remediation table along the way to handle your bad rows manually later, you can actually set that up. Uh, great news is these pipelines that we're setting up, they do support auto scaling. Um, in this demo, you're going to see me use fixed scaling to a single node uh, because it's just a small demo and this is a shared workspace. Um, and once complete, you do get a visual representation of the pipeline you've created, which helps you understand data lineage as well as helps you with debugging problems as you develop them. So the demo I'm gonna be running through today, let's do this. It's gonna deal with the New York City taxi data. So in order to get set up, I went ahead and created a few folders I set up a raw zone for my yellow taxi trip data, another for my taxi zone lookup to where we can decode some of the IDs that we're gonna get in our data. I also went ahead and set up some silver folders as well as a gold folder, and we're gonna walk all the way through those. Um, I also went ahead and downloaded some information, uh, some of the trip data, and there's that taxi zone lookup. Went ahead and downloaded those before we got started today just to save us some time on downloads but I do want to clean up my workspace before getting going. This should clean up a 
work. Let's make sure that we're good and clean. Go to data, tables. Yep, you can see I did have some tables, but I deleted my last demo. Loading, loading, loading. All right, there we go. Nothing up my sleeve. This isn't a pre rolled demo. All right. Get done with that guy. So let's take a look at the data that we downloaded. We can run this. You can see that I've loaded February 2022 through January 2023. Got that ready to go. I've also got my taxi zone lookup. All right. So let's take a look at our very first Delta Live table. And for the first one, what I want to do is I want to pull in that zone lookup data and I want to set up a Delta Live table around it. So this first demo I'm going to walk through, we do use Python. Uh, in a later demo, I'll show you something similar, something more complex in SQL. But for now, everything starts out with this decorator DLT. And I'm going to set up a table. You could also set up a view here. Uh, but in this case, I want to set up a table. I want to give it a name. And I also want to mark it as a bronze table. This is optional, but I consider it a best practice to give myself a hint later as to what this table is. This is going to be my bronze. Then you'll define uh, a Python function. It can be as complex as you want it to be. But in this case, really all I want to do is read this one file into a data frame. And I want to spit that data frame back out. So we could get more complex here. We could do filtering, et cetera, et cetera. So as long as at the end we return a data frame, that's what's going to get turned into our Delta Live table. So you'd think all you have to do is run all and you'd be ready to go, right? Well, that's not actually how it works. What you're going to notice is this script doesn't run successfully. I should get an error here. Oh, so they have uh, Databricks is updated. It used to get an error message. Now you get a message saying, this is valid. This is ready to go. Looks like you've defined a Delta Live table, but if you want it to run on a recurring basis, you've actually got to create a pipeline around it. So kudos to Databricks for getting that fixed. So how do we actually define that pipeline? Go down to our workflows. Click on Delta Live tables, and we're going to create a pipeline. And we're going to create raw. Uh, this is my lookup. First thing you can do is you can choose one of three different editions. And you're probably asking yourself, when do I use which? Well, I did include a link to show us the differences between core, pro, and advanced. And if we come down here, you'll notice the first change between uh, basic and pro. Pro adds in change data capture or slowly changing dimension transformations. And then advanced starts adding in our data quality expectation rules. So in this case, we're doing something super simple. So we are going to choose core. And the reason we do that is to run cheaper. At this point, we get to choose, do we want this pipeline running on a schedule or when something triggers it? You know, We could actually call a Python script to trigger this event, or do we want it to run all the time? So if you've got IoT type data or micro batch data landing continuously, yep, continuous is probably the better choice. But in this case, this is just a raw zone lookup file. I really only want it to be triggered. So we're gonna go with triggered. Next up, we're gonna choose that library, the notebook that I defined earlier. Notice you can pull it out of your repos, shared files, or just out of my user folder. And we're going to do our raw taxi zone lookup. You can uh, you can register the table you're about to create just in the Hive Metastore, or 
by the end of the month, you can register it to Unity Catalog. And I'm running on a preview. So I do see the future option before the rest of you will, but this is coming soon. Storage location, if you want to store the resulting uh, Delta Live table files in a certain location, say in S3 or in Azure Data Lake Studio, here's where you can define it. So DFS or ABL, ABFS, but I'm just gonna let it store to default, but I am going to stick this table in my S louder schema that I showed you earlier. I want it to appear here under the Hive Meta Store S louder. You can define custom, uh, custom policies on your cluster on how they start up. That's outside of the scope of this demo, but it is supported. And for our cluster mode, I'm going to go with fixed size, single worker. Again, I'm on a shared instance. Uh, optionally, you can turn on photon acceleration. Basically, this is the go fast button of Databricks. Uh, if a workload runs slowly without it, try turning it on. Keep in mind, turning it on does increase your uh, DBU cost, but I'm always a fan of test, measure, and then decide what's best for you. You can also add tags to your cluster. So if you're monitoring your billing usage, you can identify how much cost is being incurred by this one. Delta Live table. You can also do notifications, but let's go ahead and skip on over that for now. We'll do create. We're ready to go. Let's actually kick off our first. So we've created, we're starting, we're waiting for resources. So we're waiting for that one VM to become available. First run will take us about five minutes. So while we're waiting for that, let's go back over to our demo. When this is complete, I'll be able to run this query. But notice, hey, that table didn't exist yet. And while we're waiting, Ruthie, do we have any questions that I can take while I'm waiting for this to run? Doesn't look like we have any at the moment, but if anyone does have any, feel free to add them into the uh, chat or Q&A now and I can ask them. Awesome. All right. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It's a lot like watching paint dry. Not very interesting. <laughs> I think we can go ahead and move forward. All right. I'll come back. Let's go. So we'll come back and run this in a bit. But next, let's take a look at another situation. Turn that off. Oh, hey, Shannon. Yes. We actually just got one question come through. Okay. Um, it says, how do you know how to size your cluster in Databricks? Um, <laughs> great question. During development, I always run with smaller one, maybe two node clusters. Look for them. So I'm going to have to... Um, how long do you have for that to run? The faster you want it to go, the larger you'll scale up. Um, also, additionally, you've got that photon option that can speed things up. According to Databricks, 2.9 times faster than not using it, but only for certain workloads. So most of the time, the answer is measure the different scale up points, um, measure the different types of VMs you can use, and test it. Does that help? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So for our next demo, uh, this time what I want to do is I want to read in that uh, the trip data, so the yellow taxi trip data. You'll notice things are getting a little more complex. Um, I did find that there was some interesting schema changes in the data. So what I wanted to do up front is define our schema. But then it's the same decorators before, the LT table. This time it's raw yellow trip data, still going into bronze. Notice I'm getting a little more complex. I'm saying merge schema together, use the schema that I defined above. These two together, if there's changes that won't break, it'll automatically handle it. It's only gonna break is if 
one of the files I try to read will not fit into this schema. You'll notice this time I also want to read an entire folder of data. And the reason I'm setting it up this way is I'm going to run this table uh, in a continuous mode. And then I'm going to add data live and watch that data flow through. Uh, I also want to add some audit columns. I want to see when, when did the data come in? What was the file name that we read in? And I want to tag that onto the table column list. So we're going to go here. I'm going to put a new tab. I'm going to create a new pipeline. Raw yellow trips. And again, I'm still doing just basic stuff so I can go core. This time I'm doing continuous. Now I would like to pause here and point out. Normally, if you were building a start to finish data live table, you can build it as one pipeline with many notebooks attached. But in this example, I want some of these tables to be read in batch and I want some to be read in continuous. So once you choose for the entire pipeline that you want it to run triggered, you can't say, but then I want you to run these steps continuous. So that's why I'm setting up two raw pipelines here. Let's go back to users, to me. And here's my trip data. Again, I'm just going to use Hive Metastore, put it here. Again, I only want to use one worker. I'm not going to use photon acceleration. And we're going to create this guy. And notice I didn't have to hit start this time because I marked it as continuous. It creates it and immediately starts it. So while we wait for that one to run, let's go back. Hey, our raw zone lookup has completed the first run. Once it initialized the resources, it only ran for seven seconds. So let's take a quick look at. Here we are. Running, running, running. And there's our data. So we've got our first one loaded. So I can close this guy now. This is going to take a while. So while we're waiting for the next table to run, let's talk about the silver transformation. We're going to open this guy now. So now, even more complex, we're going to define a collection of rules. And we want to define some some rules about data. I want to create rules that tell me what a valid passenger account is. Basically, if the passenger account column is greater than zero, we know that's valid. There are some cases where you get nulls. So this rule would actually mark those rows as invalid. Uh, I also want to test uh, cases where an airport amount was charged. So. What I found out in the data is whenever a trip starts or ends in uh, LaGuardia or JFK, there's an additional 25 charge. So let's test for that. Let's see if there's any cases where that's being charged and it's not one of those. And then finally, let's double check our math. Let's make sure that the total amount charged is actually equal to all of the subcharges in the record. So yeah, completely made up uh, data quality rules here, but they work for our demo. And then finally, I'm going to define um, quarantine rules as none of these uh, are, sorry, it's all of these in order to make it valid and put it in our valid table. If anyone fails, we're going to put it in our invalid table. So with these rules defined, we can now define um, our first table as a temporary table, aka I could have called this a view. It's a habit to call it a table. So we're going to create a temporary table called yellow taxi trips is valid check. So I'm going to read the raw data and I'm going to add a column to tell me 
is the record one that needs to be quarantined or not? Basically, is it valid or not? And then I'm going to create two persisted tables here, one for valid, one for invalid. Valid ones are basically is quarantined equals false. Invalid is quarantined equals true. So let's go ahead and set up that guy. Let's go here, actually here. Oh, we're out of resources again. I'm gonna try this one more time. If this fails, there is a workaround. Basically, I'll delete my other one. Uh, we'll just create one pipeline. All right, so okay. let's create our silver pipeline. We have data quality rules, so this time we have to choose advanced. I'm going to get back to triggered. Load our yellow trips to silver. High meta store again, put it back in my S router schema. We're going to go fixed one worker and create. This is batch, so I do have to kick it off for the first time. Actually, stop because this can't complete until this other guy completes. And it failed again. All right. So I am going to cheat uh, for the demo. And I'm going to delete the pipeline that'll produce our raw zone lookup. And actually, you know what? I'm going to delete all three and I'm going to do a long demo because we know there's one process. free up all those rules. And I'll let my coworkers know that they broke the demo. Yeah. All right. So let's move. So in this demo, I'm actually going to do a single pipeline with all of the steps. Since one of my steps is going to require advanced, I'm now going to have to pay for all of the steps to use the advanced features. So slightly more expensive processor. I am going to go with triggered. Fingers crossed we can do this final demo. And now we will do our zone lookup and then the trips. Load to silver, and we're going to come back and edit it before we do the gold transformation. We're going to put all the silver and uh, solder fixed. One, create, and start. Fingers crossed we can get back that VM we just freed up. And while we're waiting for that, Ruthie, do we have any questions? Nothing at the moment, um, but anyone have any questions, you can always add it to the Q&A or the chat. That one and that one, we're done with those two. So the unfortunate part of doing this all as one, doing it shared. Um, I did have a little demo set up for us where I completely make up rows and stuff them into new files so that we could pretend to get live trip data from yellow uh, taxi and then shove that into a new file so we could actually watch each new file get picked up automatically 
uh, using the continuous method. So we're not going to be able to show that today because our continuous uh, pipeline didn't work for us. That is unfortunate. All right, single pipeline still running. Hi, Shannon. Um, yes. I want to let you know it looks like quotas have been increased. So I don't know if you wanted to retry that. Uh, let's let's see if this one goes through, and if so, okay. we can we can go back and try. Oh, it looks like we got our one, awesome. which is awesome. All right, so here we go. Initializing. setting up our tables. And the cool thing about this way of doing it, you're going to see the dependencies up here once it does this last step here. And there we are. There's our trip data. There's our check. There's our invalid and valid. And there's our lookup. So there's no dependency on these two, so we can parallelize here. But I only have one VM, so you should see, yep, this guy finished first. This guy run for a little over a minute. So now we can go back while it's running. We can actually rerun this step. Because my cluster is still up and running. There's our results. It was so fast because none of the data changed uh, since the last time I ran it. This is probably not ready yet. Yep. So the trip data is not quite ready yet. But it's getting there. I've got two open tabs to that. Let's refresh this. Yep, just the zone lookup's ready to go now. Oh, actually, let's go back. This should be ready now. Yep. There's some of our trip data. And then yeah. we did have a question come in. Yes. Uh, the question is, what was the error that you had on the pipeline and how might you avoid or fix this in your own workspace if we run into it? Sure. Uh, so the error message that came up was uh, it was unable to spin up a new VM. Uh, so in our case, we needed to go into the Azure portal because we're running Databricks in Azure. And we needed to increase the quota uh, for VM type uh, F. Series two, um, once that's turned on, come back in here and rerun it. I don't know what it was just raised to, so I'm gonna be careful and I'm only gonna run the bare minimum for this demo because I don't know who else was running a demo. But basically, in your own workspaces, increase the quota, try again is the way to resolve it. Perfect, thank you. No problem. So there's our trip data. And we're gonna skip that part of the demo because that's showing you off the live. And let's go back. All right, we don't have our valid or invalid just yet. It's testing all of that right now. So we'll be able to test that here. Oh, here we go. So we're loading our invalid and valid tables now, which is pretty cool. to our running. That is my last run, so let's not look at that just yet.
trip data taxing zone. And now we're complete. Let's go back. Also run. Oh, if I didn't add the character, it would run. So here are our ballads. If we spin through here, you'll notice. Oh, sorry about that. Minimum one, maximum six. Let's look here. Oh, here's some records with zeros. And if we look at some of these, all right, so that was picked up and dropped off in 132. So the problem with this one must be if we add up all the charges, they don't add up. Yep. 8035 is more than 80.05 plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Plus zero. So that's invalid. So our final steps. Take a look at the world. This is uh, now we're going to create it using SQL. So I'm in a SQL cell here, create a refresh live table. This is the same as that DLT.table uh, decorator. Using Delta, I basically saying I want to write to a Delta table as, and then we're selecting some columns from our valid taxi trips. And we're going to join to our taxi zone on pickup location ID equals location ID so that we can add information about those pickup zones and drop off zones. So, again, let's go over and we're going to edit. And this time we're just going to add. So, over to gold. A better name. Start. And then when we're done here, we'll be able to select from this table. Any new questions or chat since the last time we took a pause? Ruthie? Nope, nothing else. Setting up tables. So here's the weird part. So that yellow, this last one here is my gold view. It actually shows up like it's not dependent on our valid. So there is still a bug in rendering where it doesn't show a dependency between a SQL script and a Python script. So that's a bug that I've got listed with Databricks now to get that resolved. But this guy does depend on that guy. And it's running now because I ran that last time. So we already have one copy of our valid table. That's what it's currently reading. But if we had scripted all this out from the beginning, this wouldn't complete until after this stuff. So as soon as this one step completes, we'll go back over. Look at the results.
Invalid, valid. We don't have our gold. So now we do. Pick up location ID, Financial District North, Manhattan, Ozone. Drop all this on Manhattan. And now we're complete. And that's Delta Lab tables start to finish. SQL and Python, data quality rules. Uh, triggered, but not continuous. We that demo broke, but uh, the rest of the features are here. Any questions? Doesn't look like we have any that have come through. Okay. Well, if anyone changes your mind, uh, we've got that info at bpcs.com uh, email address out there. So if you do need extra information, if you'd like to get a copy of these scripts to try play along at home, um, feel free to let us know and we'll send you a copy. Awesome. Thanks so much, Shannon. Um, yeah, anytime. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, we know this is probably during your lunchtime, and we just thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. Um, we do have quite a few more workshops scheduled out. You can always hop on to bpcs.com. Um, that's our website to check out the events that we have on there. Um, and you can register on there for the Zoom workshops. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the other ones as well. If you have any questions, you can email us at info at ppcs.com. And also, um, you can follow us on social media. I'll be posting um, the recording of this webinar tomorrow, so you can take a look at that. But we will also be announcing um, any of our future events and um, fun things that we have going on, um, some uh, blog posts that we have coming up that are super interesting and other events that we will be attending or um, presenting at in the future as well. We appreciate you guys and hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining. And thanks, Shannon. Thank you.